I'm Nicholas Mastro Mateo. Could you spell it? M A S T R O M A T T E O. <clears throat> so is it Italian? Yes. So when what is your birthday? September 13th, 1933. And where were you born? I was born in Glen Cove, New York, which is on Long Island. Glen Cove? Glen Cove. G L E N C O V E. C O Glen Cove. Yes. Hmm. Tell me about your family, your parents and your siblings. My parents <clears throat> lived on Long Island. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was uh, a gardener and he lived about, he lived two doors away from the church. He was very Catholic. And my mother was raised in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. My father was raised in Italy. So he came over when he was about 14 years old. Mm. How about your siblings? I have two sisters, one older and one younger. Mm. And they both currently live in Sacramento. Very close from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the school you went through. I went to uh, Glen Cove uh, uh, Elementary School. Actually, it, it the one for me was two because uh, I was raised I was raised Catholic, mm -hmm. and when I was in the seventh grade, I decided that I wasn't too sure I wanted to be Catholic, and so I asked my parents if it would be okay with them if I chose my own religion, and they said yes. Wow, you are very mature. Yeah. I, uh, well, I learned a lot about our country and our, you know, the way we live, and I realized that I had not only a right, but a need to determine my own future. So what was the religion that you chose? Uh, none. I just wanted to go to different, different religions, and I still wanted to go to church. My parents didn't really believe me. I was... Um, they thought that you were kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's exactly. And so, to, uh, <clears throat> to remove all doubt, I went to church every day for a year. Not every Sunday, but every day? Every day, right. Wow, that's a real commitment that you made. Well, yeah, I, uh, I didn't really think I should have to do it, but, you know, I had to live in the same house as my parents, and so... <laughs> that's, that's what I did. So tell me, when did you graduate uh, high school? What high school? I, I graduated from John Marshall High School. John Marshall? Yeah. So in the same Glen Cove? Yes. Mm -hmm. And... <clears throat> when? Uh, 1951. Yep. And then... Um, We moved, we moved to California during that time. Yeah. And did you know anything about Korea? Did you know that the, the Korean War broke out at the time? How, and how did you come to know about it? Well, <clears throat> we, had the, we had the draft. And everybody was being drafted. And... Um, I decided that, uh, uh, and, and by that time we were living in California, and so I decided that uh, right after the draft I would, well, <clears throat> before the draft rather, I would start college. So I went to Los Angeles City College, mm -hmm. because by that time we were living out here. What did you study? Well, I started off uh, studying zoology. Geology? Zoology. Zoology. Yes. Oh. 
But that was because in order to get into medical school, we needed a general science major. And, and so I, uh, I majored in zoology. I was pretty sure I was going to go to medical school. And uh, that's what I did. Oh, when? Well, after graduation from college, from City College. Yeah, when did you graduate? I graduated in, uh, oh, let me think now, because I graduated about 19, well, I graduated 53 or 54. Mm -hmm. And then what medical school did you go? After the service, I went to the University of Innsbruck in Austria. Austria? Yeah. Wow. And Innsbruck. Yeah. Then where, when were you drafted? I was drafted in 1953. So from 1953 until 1955. Army? Yeah. And where did you get the basic military training? Well, <clears throat> since I was going to go to medical school, and I was pretty sure I was going to do that, I decided that what I should do is go to medical school, you know, right after service. And so when my <clears throat> When my military training was over, then I went to medical school in the service. And as it turned out, they had stopped fighting in Korea in, in 1955 mm -hmm. for a short period of time. Right. And so uh, I took advantage of that to, to start school right away. And <clears throat> as it turned out, they resumed fighting after the uh, armistice. And so I didn't have much time. And from, um, from 1953 until 55, I had, the, uh, I had a choice, and I decided on um, medical school, and I decided to go to Innsbruck. Mm -hmm. So have you never been into Korea? No. No. You, you knew that there was Korean War broke out, right? Oh, yes, of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. when, uh, when, it, when it came time <clears throat> to complete my education, I went to UCLA because we were living out here. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as it turned out, I had, since I lived close to UCLA, because we were living in California, what I did was uh, registered at UCLA right after high school. You said that you went to LA City College. Yes. And then UCLA, what's going on? They were basically the same school. Oh, basically same school. Yeah, mm. UCLA was, <clears throat> UCLA was Los Angeles City College. It was a two-year college, and um, when they when they started the four-year school, they uh, they moved out here to Westwood. So originally, <clears throat> they were in in uh, in downtown Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Got it. And so I started going to City College, but by that time, it was called UCLA. I see. Got it now. So how did it work? I mean, you got the basic military training done, right. and then go right into the medical school, not serve in the Army, right? Was oh, it no. part of your service? No, no. It, from 1953 to 1955, I was on active duty. Mm -hmm. As it turned out, I went because I went to UCLA to City College, 
that um, that was essentially my, the beginning of my college career. When I finished UCLA... When did you finish? I, I, I did... I oh, did, 1953, right? Yeah, uh, actually I finished uh, in, in 19... I finished in 1962. Hmm. You mean the medical school? Yeah. Yeah. But tell me about from 53 to 55 when you were serving in the army, right. but you went to the medical school in Austria, right. Lin Innsbruck. Innsbruck. How does that work? Was it part of your military service to be in the Innsbruck? Well, what, the, way it, the, way it, the way it turned out is I did my military service. They stopped fighting for a short period of time, which was the armistice of 53. Mm -hmm. right? And so uh, I, I didn't do, I did my military service, but I did that in Germany because right. what happened was they started, uh, they ended the armistice and they started fighting again. Mm -hmm. And then how did you end up being in Innsbruck for medical school? Was it part of military service or is it just civilian life? No, it was just civilian life. Huh. So, so, so as it was, I, I never really got to Korea. Right. You've never been into Korea. No. But when were you discharged from the army? Yeah. When were you dis discharged? I was discharged in... In May of 55. You were in Germany? Yes. And when did you get into Innsbruck? Uh, I got into Innsbruck <clears throat> in 1955. Oh, got it. You are so-called Korean War era veteran, right? Right. Right. What do you think about that? You've never been into Korea, but you are still Korean War veterans. What do you think about that? Well, I took the war very seriously. Tell me. I, I really felt that there was a need for us to, um, to defend Korea. I really felt that the, the communist takeover of, of that area of the world was imminent unless we... Unless we uh, defended ourselves, and to me it was a good idea. So I wasn't interested in seeing the, the world become communist. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to see that happening, right? Yeah. Okay. Did you actually want to go to Korea if you were given the chance? Oh yes. What happened was, when they, start, when they stopped fighting, uh, by that time, I was at Fort Ord in California, and I volunteered for overseas shipments. And uh, as it turned out, they started fighting about, what, two months later, I think. And so uh, I volunteered for overseas shipment right away, and then I got sent to, uh, to Germany. Not Korea. Yeah. What did you feel about that? I thought it was the smartest thing I ever did. I took the war very seriously. And I thought that we all should take it seriously because if we didn't, then the communists would take over uh, uh, China, essentially, or, or Korea. What do you think about the legacy of the Korean War? What is the importance of the Korean War to you? Even though you were not there, but still you are a Korean War veteran. Right. And why do you think that is important? Or what do you think about the Korean War overall? What I think is, what I thought at that time, is that we had no choice. I certainly didn't want to see the communists take over Korea. And 
seemed to me the logical thing to do would be to help them fight. Why, why do you think it's important to remember the Korean War? Why? Remembering what happened was, was very contemporary to me. And I didn't think that the South Korean people wanted to be communist. And I didn't think that they wanted uh, any other fate than to de determine their own fate. And so it seemed to me <clears throat> that what would happen if we, if, if I didn't stay in the, in, in the service, that they would have definitely been uh, straddled with the government that they didn't want. I was disappointed that North Korea broke away. I didn't think that they did so voluntarily. So I thought if, if given the choice, the Korean people would definitely have chosen to be independent and not chosen to be communists. Do you know that the Korean Korea was very, really poor at the time? Did you know anything about Korea? No. You never heard about it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And do you know? Well, I'd heard about it because we have we had Koreans here in California. Uh, we actually had a, a Korean newspaper that was being published here. Really? Oh yeah. Hmm. And I think that, um, or I thought. The only thing to do was to support uh, uh, the South Korean regime. Do you know what happened to South Korea after the war? Now? Well, yeah, pretty much, because I kept on, on, I kept up on things as they were going. Tell me about the knowledge on on South Korea you have. What do you know now about the Korea? Well, I know that. Um, they chose their own government, and they remained independent. And I know that they didn't want to be communists. I know that in technical development, that they have uh, advanced by leaps and strides. So, it was byproduct of American intervention there. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure of that. So are you proud of to be called Korean War veterans? Oh, yeah. I think we had a real reason to be there. I'm glad that I... Uh, I guess I should <clears throat> backstep a little bit and say when I volunteered for overseas shipment, I just assumed that I would go to Korea. But that's not what happened. Right because they needed people elsewhere, too. And so <clears throat> I got assigned to the military in California at Fort Ord and by, at, at the Fort Ord Army Hospital. What was your unit? My unit was the, uh, well, my, my unit was the 8th Evacuation Hospital. 8th? 8th Evacuation mm -hmm. Hospital. And? And and that and, and they were in Germany. And so, what happened was I got assigned to a European uh, evacuation hospital. What was your specialty at the time? Well, by then I was uh, an infantry medic. Medic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any, any special training that you got from the military about the medic? Well, <clears throat> a, a, a field medic is, is, is essentially a first responder. And as a first responder, you know, my, my job really, I, I carried a rifle. I, I carried a carbine, not uh, an M1. And... Uh, I just felt that would, I would probably finish the war as, a, as an infantry medic. But that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. yes. So you were lucky. You don't have to fight. Well, I don't know if I was lucky or not. I think that um, 
the normal draft was just two years. And so, had I stayed with, uh, had I stayed in the Army, I would have been a field medic. Did you get the GI Bill? Yeah. Mm, so did, did that actually help you study in Austria? Quite a bit, yeah. Mm, how much did you get paid? We got paid $125 a month. Mm -hmm. For how long? I think for every day that we were in service, we got a day and a half mm -hmm. of GI Bill. So about three years? So yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm. And did they pay the tuition for Innsbruck? No. How much was the tuition there at the time? Oh, it wasn't very much because the European economy had an exchange rate that was very favorable. Favorable to the dollar. Mm. So with the 125, you were able to leave and pay the tuition there? Yeah. Very good. And actually what I did is after, after, my, after I used up my GI Bill, I started, uh, I, I worked. And I worked for a company called Bechtel. Bechtel? Yeah. Huh. And that, you know, gave me a pretty good job. And when, when, when did you get the job from Bechtel? Well, right as soon as my GI Bill ran out, I went, I went right to work. Where in where? Well, by then, I was, I was back in Austria at the medical school. Right. And so I just continued studying. I continued advanced studies in medicine as, as a medic. Any message that you want to leave for this interview as a Korean War era veterans and about the Korean War, about the Korean War veterans, their honorable service and sacrifice, and the relationship between U.S. and Korea? Anything that you want to leave? I'm awfully glad that I stayed. I'm glad that I continued fighting. As it turned out, um, I got a lot of medical experience, of course. And uh, I think it was the best thing I could have done. What about the U.S. and Korea relationship right now? Well, I, I don't know. I don't keep up on the politics. But uh, I think that, that they are an important ally. I think we're an important ally for them. I don't think that the Koreans would have had as much uh, advancement if we hadn't supported them. And I think that as an ally, it's, uh, they're not only an important ally, but it was an important move for me because it's what I wanted to do. So I don't think they owe me anything. I think I owe them quite a bit. So you had a very successful life after you were discharged from the army, right? Well, after I was discharged, yeah, I came. After I was discharged, I, I became an, an assistant professor in Austria. And, uh, and then I decided to bring my advanced studies here because we didn't have a specialty in Austrian in uh, in emergency medicine. So I was one of the, one of the first American medical doctors that worked on the emergency. Yeah, right. and I I thought it was for me a lucky move because as soon as uh, as soon as I found out that Los Angeles County Hospital was had. A, a new specialty called emergency medicine. I came home immediately and got myself a job with the faculty of emergency medicine. Thank you so much again. Okay.